What's up YouTube, it is your boy JB and we are here today with a episode review of Pose. This is season three, episode four, and it's titled Take Me to Church. Take Me to Church, it reminds me of that show on Take Me to Church by the artist Hozier. All right, you guys. So before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any of my other videos and you like the content and you're not subscribed to the channel already, do me a solid favor and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button, and also hit that like button. All right, you guys, so without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into this. All right, you guys, so this episode is centered around Pray Tell. So we see Pray Tell in the beginning of the episode, and he was, you know, waking up in a puddle of, pool of sweat. So he was, you know, changing his clothes and his sheets, and then we see him, and he went to the doctor. So Judy, Nurse Judy and um, Blanca were there with him, and because he noticed, you know, he noticed a lymph, his lymph nodes. So the doctor did a biopsy on it and the doctor comes back and tells him that it is an AIDS related cancer. So Prey is like, well, what about chemotherapy? He was like, you know, chemo would kill the, the cancer, but the chemo would also kill you. So then Prey asked him, well, how much longer do I have to live? He says, just a rough guess about six months. So Judy and you know, Blanca talking to Pray Tell, he's in a different world at this point. And Judy is like, fuck that, you know, we're gonna get a, a different, a second opinion. And, you know, Pray, he says, you know what, this is giving me time to tell the people that I love, to let the people know that I love them, I love, you know, let the people I know love, that I love, let them know that I love them. I know that probably came out all weird and stuff. So he is at this point, he's going home. So then we see Pray Tell, he goes home and we meet his mother who's portrayed by Anna Maria Horsford, Horsford from, if you guys, she's from Friday, um, what else has she played on? The Waynes Brothers, she has done so much, uh, what else has she played in? She played, has she played, she's playing some of Tyler Perry's movies if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, amazing, I love her. And we are introduced to his aunts, Jada and Latrice. So Aunt Latrice is being played by Janet Hubert. And Jada is being portrayed by Jack A. Harry. Love me some Jack A. Jack A is actually also portraying a role of, the character's name is Paulina on Days of Our Lives. It comes on NBC. Check out your local listings and check her out. So, he t you know, he's come home to tell his, his family what's going on with him. So he tells his family that he has AIDS. His mother, she gets up because she can't take that, so she leaves the room. So it just leaves him in there with Latrice and with um, Jada. Jada is more understanding, whereas Latrice is, you know, by the Bible, by the church laws and all that stuff. And she's, like I said, by the church, she's very judgmental because, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I actually stopped going to church. You just realize that if God is, you know, what people preach about God, that he's, he's all-knowing, he's forgiving, he's this and he's that, why do y'all, like, why do y'all, and, and then if in the Bible it says no sin is greater than any other, then why do the church people make, you know, why do they have homo, homo, homosexuality as the top, as, at the top as, oh, that's damnation, oh, that's the worst thing that can happen, when we talk about pedophilia, y'all, I mean, there's a lot of pedophilia in the church. No shit, I'm not being funny, but you know, especially in the Catholic church. Like, let's be honest. You got adultery. You have, you got people who are adulterers. You got people who have kids out of wedlock. You have people who steal. You have, like, if no sin is greater than the other, why do y'all equate this one sin as the, the the highest sin like he without sin cast the first stone right like I, I just don't i think like for me that's really truly one of the reasons that i don't go to church i just feel that the church is very judgmental and they use god in a way to justify their disdain their hatred their lack of understanding stuff you know it's just it just is i just feel like it's a justification for Certain church people, not all of them, I will say certain people. So, you know, um, Jada said that she was gonna go check on um, his mama. So him and Latrice, they'd go over to the church 
and she tells him, you know, she tells him what a new pastor is, and his, his name is Vernon. He was like, Vernon? We'll talk about Vernon in a little bit. So we go to the church, and there is Lettucey there singing. I'm like, oh, I know that voice anywhere. I love Lettucey. Her voice is just crisp and amazing. But let's move on. All right, you guys. So Prey is sitting in the, in the, in the church pews, and Vernon comes up behind him. So they talk. So it's been 25 years since they last saw each other. They were lovers at one point, but now Vernon has turned his life over to God and he no longer, you know, Vernon actually sounds like Donnie McClurkin. Vernon sounds like Donnie McClurkin. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think about it until I just started talking. He literally sounds like Donnie McClurkin. Like, so you're suppressing yourself is basically what it is. You have gotten in, so back up. So Vernon has a wife and three kids. So Pray Tell is naming off a lot of women. And it's like, oh no, it's Ebony. And Pray Tell's like, wait a minute, Ebony, my high school best friend, the one person that I told about everything, you know, I told her everything, especially everything when it comes to me and you, you married her. He says, yes. But like I said, once again, he's talking about he's turned his life over to God. You know, here's, a, here's another thing for me. God makes all of us unique in our own respective ways. If God makes no mistakes, like they say, like they say in the church, God makes no mistakes, then how are you saying that God made a mistake when he made someone that is gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, whatever? I mean, how, how do you say, if, if God makes no mistakes, then why, when did he make a mistake with, where did he make a mistake with that? Like, that is, that's why I, my, me and the church, I just have a love hate with the church at this point. I still, you know, I believe in God, you know, but I just don't listen to the preachings these days. I, I, I've stopped. But that's neither here nor there. So then, you know, Pray Tell is telling him that he's dying. He's like, of what? He's like, you know what? It's the same thing as killing all of us. And Vernon was like, us. He was like, yes, us, me, you, our people. So then he invites Praytel over to dinner. I'm like, you think that's a good idea? I mean, I guess. I don't think that's a good idea, but I mean, go for it. Don't go for it, please don't. So then we see Praytel. So Praytel went home. He's talking to his mama. He's telling her that, you know, he's going to dinner with Ebony and with um, Vernon. Now, before that, she said that, you know, she he got her through some dark times because she always knew that he when he told her that he was gay, that he would get AIDS. I'm like, wow. You knew he would get AIDS. I would hate it if my mother had ever told me anything like that. I knew you were gonna get it. Why would you know that I would get it? I mean, if they, I mean, the, the way she's talking, you would think that condoms were not a thing back in the 90s, which they definitely were, but I mean, I guess, I don't know. So she tells him, you know, when he goes over there to Vernon and Ebony's, don't start anything. I'm just like, don't start anything. If the man is gay and they were lovers, he ain't got to start anything. It's already there, which we're going to get into that in just a little bit. So then we find out a little bit more about Praytel. So Praytel's stepfather, I'm assuming that was his stepfather, he either molested Praytel or he raped Praytel. And his mother stayed even after he told her what was going on. For the life of me, I can't understand that. If your child is sitting here telling you that the person that you are married to is abusing them listen to your kid i get that she wanted a man in the house but why would you want a man that is abusing someone your child a person that you gave birth to someone that came out of your body you want to allow somebody to treat to abuse your child i just don't understand it and then she told him he needs to get over it how do you tell someone to get over rape or molestation? I don't get that at all. 
I don't get it. I don't get it. How do you tell somebody to get over that? That is something that a person can't get over. It takes years. Some people need therapy, some people don't. Me personally, I've told you guys before, I was raped at 17. It took me years to get over it. It took me years to get over that because like I've said before, plenty of times I blamed myself. I always said that I was the one in the wrong for what happened to me. I justified it for so long and then after a certain point I was like, you know what, why am I justifying this? I didn't do anything wrong. That's on you, not me. I, like I justified it for so long to make it okay in my head. So when she said for him to get over it, that just, it, it upset me. Listen to that, get over it? That's not something that's easy to get over at all. But let's move on you guys. All right, you guys, next let's talk about this dinner with Pray Tell, Vernon, Ebony, and the kids. The kids, so cute. And then they were reciting the, the Bible scriptures. That was cute. But Ebony and Vernon, ooh, y'all got issues. So the phone rings and Vernon answers the phone. Actually, Ebony told him, you know, don't answer the phone. But I'm assuming it was someone calling for last rites for, you know, one of the, one of the um, parishioners. So he's leaving and he says, you know, he, t he asked Prey, will he stay there? And Ebony says, yeah, he'll stay. So we see Ebony and Prey tell they're washing the dishes and they're talking. Ebony is a woman that is just not happy at all. Like she's, I feel like Ebony is in the marriage for the illusion of marriage, the optics as Portia said. I just feel like she's in it for the wrong, I feel like she's in this marriage for the wrong reason. I, like there is someone out there for Ebony, it's just not Vernon, obviously. And then she's talking about one of the kids, there's a big five year gap between two of the kids. I think it's the, her daughter and the baby. There's a five year gap because Vernon at one point was not touching her. That's because he's gay. Like, what did you expect? Now, when Ebony had this conversation with Pray Tell, I was like, at this point, you at rock bottom. You should see that you're at rock bottom and you should want a way out of this marriage, this loveless marriage. Like, you're not getting anything from it. I'm not, I don't mean even, I don't even just mean sexually. This, you know, emotionally, I don't even know if she's getting anything emotionally or spiritually out of this marriage. Because your husband is not in the marriage with you. He's not, I mean, he's literally not in the marriage. It's the illusion of the marriage. It's the, it's the idea, it's the, it's the idea of being married on paper and for the congregation. But you guys don't have a, a real true marriage at this point. And then when she started asking Pray Tell how to please Vernon, I'm like, wait a minute. That's when you know your marriage is not good. And that's when you should reevaluate things. You should want better for yourself and for your kids. When you have to go to your husband, and I don't even just, I'm not, I'm not even going to talk about the fact that these are two men. If it was a man, a woman, and another woman, if you have to go to your husband's ex-lover or current lover and ask them, what All right, you guys, sorry, so my phone cut out because I didn't have enough storage to keep recording. I've been editing on my computer, so I didn't know that my recently deleted folder with all my videos had piled up, but we're back. So I was talking about Ebony and Pray Tell and Vernon. <clears throat> like I was saying, if you have to go to your husband's mistress, well, I'm not going to say mistress. If you have to go to the person that your husband, that you know your husband actually loves to ask, your, ask them how to please your husband, that's the point where you need to reevaluate your marriage and say, you know what, this marriage is not suiting me. You are in love with someone else and it's not me. I'm not making you happy in any way. So let me usher my way out. I don't know if Ebony will get to that point, but whatever. So Vernon does return and he says that the person, you know, passed away peacefully. So then he and Praytel go for a walk in the park. So he tells Pray Tell that, you know, I really miss you and I still love you. And Pray Tell's like, fix it, Jesus. And, <clears throat> you know, Vernon tells Pray Tell that seeing him awoke something in him that had been, I guess, lying dormant. I don't, I don't necessarily know if it's lying dormant or if it's you're repressing your actual feelings. That's really what it is. 
you've been repressing your feelings for so long that laying eyes on pray tell just awoke those feelings that you felt a long time ago um and you know he tells pray tell you know what i should have went with you years ago when you asked me to go with you but i was too afraid so you were too afraid of what the church people in the church would say about you that's really what it is you're living your life for other people you're not living your life to be yourself and to be happy that's got to be the, that's got to be one of the worst kind of lives to live you're living a lie to appease other people so that the way they don't ridicule you ostracize you or judge you like couldn't be me so pray tell tells you know he's he's adamant that he wants to leave with pray tell or you know be with pray tell in his last days so pray tell's like you know what i'm going back home sunday my bus leaves at five o'clock so Vernon says i'll be there so then pray tell goes home and his mom is he's talking to his mom you know, she talks to him about she knew when he would leave for New York. How many times he go? He says plenty of times. She says, you know, I used to sit by that window and wait for you to come back. And then one time you just didn't come back at all. So she said, did you, she says, I hope you didn't start any mess at Vernon's house. He said, that house is plenty messy without me. 100% true. So then, you know, pray tell basically read into his mom, you know, about how the church people. And it is true. Church people have a lot of secrets that they don't want people to know, that they think people don't know, but everybody knows just your little dirty secrets. Like, everybody knows your secrets. Like, <laughs> it's just funny when you think about it. It really is. But <clears throat> ultimately what Praetel wants from his mom is just for her to own up to her part and what she did, you know, you know, picking a church over him, you know, when it comes down to his stepfather and what he did to him, she does apologize to him. And, you know, she says that there was nothing wrong with Praise Hill. So she talks to him and tells him she wants him to come to church. At first he was reluctant, but then she talked him into going to church. So <clears throat> we're going to pause here. We're going to. All forward. right, you guys. So pray till he did go to church and man. He tore the house down, tore the house down, loved it. Like, th th I will say that this episode really had me and my feelings, made me cry. I don't even cry like that, but this episode had me crying. So after church, we see Praytel and his aunt Jada, they go out, and Jada's asking Praytel to forgive her. She says for not protecting him because she knew all along that Praytel was gay, but she just didn't do anything to protect him. And when it comes to Jada, I feel the reason that she didn't protect him is because earlier in the episode when she and Latrice was talking, Jada had got a divorce from her husband and the church basically ostracized her because she had a divorce. She had gotten a divorce. You know, that's the other thing with the church I don't understand. I'm not going to talk about my family's, well, I'm not going to talk about my family, but I just don't understand the church when it comes to marriage. Like, you frown upon divorce, but you would want a woman, if she's in a loveless a loveless marriage, let's say her husband is cheating on her, or her husband is abusive to her, or even, just let's just say, the relationship in itself is toxic. You would rather her stay in a toxic marriage instead of getting a divorce? Because you do see that. You do see that, and I just don't understand it. But um, like I said, she just, you know, felt some type of way. She just wants him to forgive her for not protecting him. So, you know, she asked him, what does he want in his final days? She said, because, you know, the people that are in your life now, they're not going to let them make any decisions for you because they are not blood, which is true, which I hate that. I hate that. Um, So, he, you know, she gives him power of attorney to sign. I was a little leery about him signing that power of attorney just a little bit but she asked him what does he want in his final days and you know in, in his burial he says for him to be buried he wants to be cremated she says where do you want your ashes to go he says i want you to get a locket and put a piece of me put a piece of me in the locket and give it to my friends you know and then you know you mama and aunt latrice i want you guys to have one so that way i'm always with you guys and he says in this bitch electro 
She gonna think she deserves a locket, but tell her to kiss my ass. <laughs> In his last moments, he wants to shade a lecture. I'm here for it though, but. All right, you guys, so then we see Pray Tell as he gets ready to leave. He's heading back to New York, and you guys remember, Vernon told him that he was gonna be there, you know, to see him off or go with him. I don't know which one it was gonna do. <clears throat> Pray Tell thought he saw Vernon's car, <clears throat> but it wasn't Vernon. So Vernon actually stood him up, which didn't surprise me. It didn't surprise me, but when Pray Tell was singing at church, when Vernon grabbed his hand, I was like, okay, maybe there is something there. And then when Ebony stood up, I'm like, maybe Ebony is, you know, finally coming to some sort of grips about her marriage, but I don't think so. They're gonna live miserable lives. God, that is miserable. But you guys, that's the episode. Overall, good episode. I cannot believe that we only have three more episodes left to pose. Man, three more episodes of pose left. I am going to be a mess when we get to the series finale. But that's it, you guys. Be sure to like this video. Please leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and share this video. Until the next one, you guys stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands. I would say wear, wear your mask if you want to. That's your choice. And stay blessed, you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one.